Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sam, I am a nutritionist GP. Welcome to my nutritional presentation again. Uh, today's topic is still on vitamin B series and the specific topic is on vitamin B2. As usual, before I begin my presentation, I just want to show my disclaimer. So previously we have discussed about vitamin B1 and its uh, function. Today's topic will be focused on vitamin B2. First, we will begin with an overview. So vitamin B2 is also called riboflavin. Just like vitamin C and vitamin B1, it is a water-soluble vitamin. So it is generally well absorbed directly into the bloodstream, up to a maximum of about 27 mg per meal of a dose. In other words, vitamin B2 has an upper limit with regard to how much we can absorb them in a given time. Generally, only a small amount of vitamin B2 are stored in the human body, mainly in the liver, the heart, and the kidney. Any excess will be filtered by the kidney and excreted in the urine. Therefore, it is better to take small amount of vitamin B2 frequently than to take a once-off large dose as any excess will be wasted in the toilet. Vitamin B2 is generally non-toxic. Just like other water-soluble vitamin, vitamin B2 can be damaged by heat, light, oxidation. Just a side note, vitamin B2 is the most common culprit for the bright yellow urine that we produce after taking a multivitamin. Next, we will discuss why vitamin B2 is important. Vitamin B2 is firstly important because it is an essential component of its two major coenzyme derivatives. The first derivative is called flavin mononucleotide, or FMN for short. The second coenzyme derivative is flavin adenine dinucleotide, or FAD for short. So what is a coenzyme? A coenzyme is an organic molecule that assists in a chemical reaction. More specifically, a coenzyme acts as an intermediate electrons carrier during these reactions or be transferred as a functional group between enzymes as the reaction progress. This uh, diagram or picture shows how riboflavin, which is the free form of vitamin B2, is converted to flavin mononucleotide by the enzyme riboflavin kinase. Flavin mononucleotide is then further converted into flavin adenine dinucleotide by the enzyme FAD synthase. This is just for information purpose only so that we understand how riboflavin becomes its two coenzyme derivatives. These coenzymes play an important role in energy production. As we all know, energy is needed for all cellular functions, for growth and for development. It is also important for the metabolisms of fats, drugs and steroids. The next reason why vitamin B2 is important is because its coenzyme derivative flavin adenine dinucleotide, or FAD for short, is needed in the conversion of the amino acid tryptophan to vitamin B3 or niacin. So this diagram shows again how the amino acid tryptophan is converted to niacin in the presence of FAD as a coenzyme. Similarly, uh, Flavin mononucleotide, or FMN, is needed to convert vitamin B6 to its active coenzyme form, pyridoxal 5-phosphate. Vitamin B3 and vitamin B5 will be separately discussed in future presentation. The next reason why vitamin B2 is important is because just like vitamin B6, B9, and B12, vitamin B2 plays an important role in the maintenance 
of a healthy level of an amino acid in the bloodstream called homocysteine. High level of homocysteine put you at an increased risk for heart disease in the future. Finally, vitamin B2 may help to prevent migraine. In a recent study, in a small randomized controlled trial of 50 adults with migraine, supplementation with 400 mg per day of vitamin B2 or riboflavin reduced the frequency of migraine attacks by 2 per month compared to placebo. Next, we will take a look at the chemical structure of uh, vitamin B2 and its derivative. This part is not important uh, for us to memorize, but it just helps us to understand why uh, vitamin B2 and its derivatives are named the way they are named. As we can see here, we have got riboflavin, flavin mononucleotide, and flavin adenine dinucleotide. And the conversion process de depends on the enzymes, riboflavin kinase and FAD synthase, respectively. So, as we can see here, flavin refers to these three ring carbon structures. Because every of these molecules contains these three rings, therefore, all their name contains flavin. And the free form of vitamin B2 is called riboflavin. Ribo refers to this ribo, ribose sugar molecule, which is a 5-carbon sugar molecule. Because free form of vitamin B2 is made up of a 5-carbon sugar molecule attached to a flavin molecule, therefore it is called riboflavin. And its first Coenzyme derivative is called flavin mononucleotide because it is made up of a flavin group, which is this three ring carbon group, and a nucleotide group. And the nucleotide group is made up of a nucleoside group, which is this group, attached to a phosphate group, which is this group. And because there is only one nucleotide group, it is called flavin mononucleotide. Next, we have got flavin adenine dinucleotide. As the name implies, di refers to two. And it's, it is because it has got two nucleotide groups as shown in these two green boxes. And the adenine group refers to this structure here contained within this blue box. Therefore, it is called flavin adenine dinucleotide. So this is just for understanding purpose only. There is no need to memorize. And don't panic. So the next part we want to talk about is what happens if you don't have enough vitamin B2. The classical disease of riboflavin deficiency is called ariboflavinosis. Early signs and early signs of uh, vitamin B2 deficiency include inflammation of the order or mouth, mucosa, and tongue, cracks at the corner of the mouth, seborrheic dermatitis, normocytic anemia, and potentially mild growth disturbances. So um, we can see that in, in this picture, inflammation of the oral mucosa has led to the formation of ulcer, and there is cracking of the uh, corner of the mouth here in this picture. If left untreated, chronic severe deficiency can lead to the formation of cataracts, degeneration of, of liver, and damage to the nervous system. These later changes may not be reversible even with the supplementation or replenishment of vitamin B2 later on. And these changes are due to the chronic impaired energy production, chronic impaired metabolic pathways, either directly from deficiency of B2 and or deficiency of other nutrients, especially other B vitamins, through reduced levels of B2 derivatives, flavin coenzymes. And finally, we will discuss where we can find vitamin B2 and how much to take. 
So natural sources of vitamin B2 include egg, organ meats, lean meats, milk, and vegetables. More than 90% of dietary uh, vitamin B2 is in the free uh, is in the uh, derivative coenzyme form of FAD or FMN. When we eat this food, the free riboflavin form is released by the digestive enzyme in the small intestine and then absorbed into the bloodstream. The main exception to this is egg, which contains mainly the free form or the riboflavin form of vitamin B2. And this table uh, shows the dietary uh, recommended daily intake of people at different age group, male, female, pregnancy, and during lactation. And also to note, uh, generally, certain foods such as grains and cereal, cereals are being fortified with uh, riboflavin in many countries, including Australia, in the US and the UK. In summary, vitamin B2 or riboflavin has two important uh, coenzyme derivatives. They are flavin mononucleotide, FMN for short, and flavin adenine dinucleotide, FAD for short. FMN and FAD are involved in energy production, therefore are essential for all metabolic processes. FAD and F and FMN are needed for the synthesis of vitamin B3 and B6 respectively. Thank you very much for watching my video. If you like my presentation, please kindly subscribe and share. Thank you very much. Again, stay alive, stay safe and stay healthy. Many things. Have a nice day.